For many people throughout the pandemic, dinner plans usually look like this. You look up your favorite local restaurant on an app like Uber Eats or Deliveroo if you're in the UK, place an order, track it on the map, grab the bag from your doorstep, and voila, dinner delivered. But sometimes in those bags, restaurants include notes like these, encouraging customers to order directly from them next time. That would mean they don't have to pay delivery companies commission fees of up to 35%. Restaurants around the world have organized to push delivery services to lower their fees, while recognizing these apps have become very important. They are massively crucial. Um, begrudgingly cru uh, crucial, actually. <laughs> it's, it's hard giving away your hard-earned cash to a platform. But yeah, they're keeping us afloat. While restaurants have been struggling amid the pandemic, delivery services like Uber and DoorDash have boomed. By the end of 2020, food delivery spending had more than doubled compared to 2019 but spending at restaurants was down roughly 5%. That will be the legacy of the pandemic in this sector. Everyone had to change their behavior overnight. So are delivery apps helping restaurants or hurting them? The food delivery market as we know it actually started about 20 years ago when Grubhub in the US and Just Eat in Europe entered the market. The generation one operators, the roots of this business model were working with independent restaurants and independent restaurants that had existed for decades prior to the platform coming along. I got my Deliveroo bag and my bike, and I'm going to spend a couple of hours doing some orders. Giles Thorne researches European internet companies for Jefferies, and to better understand the food delivery industry, he spent some time actually making deliveries for Deliveroo in the UK in 2019 and 2020. Everything changed in around 2016, 2017, because a generation two competition came in and these were delivery led. These were platforms like Deliveroo, like DoorDash, like Uber Eats, that saw that uh, the consumer valued the utility of an online food delivery app and that the branded chains, the big restaurants, not the independent pizza parlor in London, but the McDonald's three doors along, would also benefit from the utility of this type of platform. There are a lot of companies vying to take control of the food delivery industry right now. The global market was projected to be worth $285 billion in 2020. Margins are low, meaning despite high demand, delivery companies mostly operate at a loss. The reason why a platform will not be making money at this point in time is essentially because they are in a competitive market. They are having to spend a large amount of money, primarily through marketing, to get consumers to download the app and start using them. The platform says, right, I got three other guys in my market. By the end of next year, I want to get two of them to exit. So I'm going to spend $100 million buying up every billboard and I'm going to send a message to the other guys that they are not going to get traffic. And that's the logic. That's why people don't make money. Since the delivery market's inception, there has been a lot of consolidation. Just Eat has undergone six major mergers and acquisitions in the last five years. Last year, it was acquired by Takeaway.com, which then acquired Grubhub for $7.3 billion. In the US, Uber Eats acquired Postmates for $2.65 billion in stock. In December 2020, DoorDash went public. By the end of the year, the company was worth at least $50 billion. Uber, DoorDash, and Grubhub now control roughly 98% of the overall U.S. food delivery market in terms of transactions. In the United Kingdom, Uber Eats, Just Eat, and Deliveroo are among the most popular food delivery apps. One restaurant working with delivery services like these is Thai Kitchen in London. We set up the business uh, just before COVID hit. We literally were open a week before the pandemic. The owner, Richard Poole, has relied on services like Uber Eats and Deliveroo to keep the restaurant alive during various levels of lockdown since March 2020. Loads of plans were in the in the pipeline when it came to us having, you know, eating eat and service and having that extra revenue stream, but obviously that went to pot, so we had to, um, we had to improvise. Thai Kitchen also offers its own service for in-store collection. We'd rather have our own delivery service, but obviously it's a lot, the logistical nightmare of having your own dis uh, delivery service is, is, is really, it's real, it's, it, it's a real challenge. That's why we outsource it to Deliveroo and Uber Eats to, 
to deliver our food. Um, another thing is uh, delivery and Uber Eats have, uh, they, can, they basically own all the drivers. It's very, very hard to find um, independent, well, they, technically they are independent, right? But it's very hard to find someone who'd come over to work with you. Do you know what I mean? Because they, they basically, they, they own the fleets. Uber Eats has nearly 5 million drivers and delivery people globally, and DoorDash has over 1 million. Most apps offer restaurants a range of services, from just helping facilitate online ordering to actually delivering the food. If the app handles the delivery, the fees can range from 10 to 35% of the total order. The whole balance of deliveries and takeaways. Right now it's, it's like 80% deliveries, right? Or 85 from, from our point of view. So I think, let's say to improve things, would be more people actually coming to collect. Because if you come collect an order, um, you basically give the restaurant 100% of the revenue. These tensions over commission fees aren't new. McDonald's franchisees have complained publicly that Uber Eats erodes their margins, while Uber has said it offers some large restaurant chains a lower service fee. In 2019, representatives from the two companies said they reached a new deal. And since the pandemic hit, various regions in the U.S., including New York, L.A., and Philadelphia, have temporarily capped delivery fees for restaurants at 10 to 15 percent. DoorDash has said the commission caps ultimately restrict restaurant choice, precisely when restaurants need the full range of options to help their businesses survive and thrive. Some restaurants are even working out of ghost kitchens, where they cook food exclusively for delivery services. Back, Uber Eats drivers have switched off their hailing apps this weekend to demand better treatment from the food delivery service. Delivery apps have also come under pressure from gig workers, demanding better employment protections, including better wages and sick pay. The CEO of Uber recently called for dialogue, but said its delivery app allows workers to make money in a flexible way. DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats told the Wall Street Journal they've provided drivers with various PPE, and Just Eat said it supports contact-free delivery and has given restaurants reduced commission fees throughout the pandemic. As these companies have become a key part of many people's lives, regulators are watching to see the impact on competition, consumers, delivery drivers, and restaurants. It's very hard to see our money go, like that amount go to, um, to them. But again, they are, they are, credit where it's due, they are keeping us afloat. So even with the commission rates being that high, if it wasn't for them, we'd actually have to shut.